Hello everybody and welcome to another update. Uh, my name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Uh, welcome to these update videos where I let you know about the uh, features and fixes and various other things that I've been up to in the Inkscape pro project. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the command line and how it relates to the multiple pages features. Uh, when I was initially developing multi-page, I deliberately excluded the command line from the scope of work. And um, it's it's become apparent that a lot of users actually really need to have some command line love. So I've revisited this week how we can make some of the multi-page functionality, especially when it comes to importing and exporting, uh, more functional for all of our command line users. Um, so, but before we get into the details, uh, as always, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my sponsors on Patreon. Um, thank you so much. Your um, support means that I can actually spend time on Inkscape, uh, focusing on these issues that everybody has. Um, if you'd like to jo join them, uh, please do follow the, the link in the description. Uh, we're looking to increase the, the, the number of spon sponsors. And, um, you know, uh, over time, um, we want to be able to build up uh, the number of hours that I'm able to work on Inkscape. Okay, so let's get into the details of what I've managed to do this week. First of all, we want to be able to select which of the pages from a document that we're about to open we actually want to see. Um, this is not just some, some, something that's valuable to command line users, it's actually valuable to everybody. So now there's an additional dash dash pages which you can indicate which of the pages from a, a multi-page SVG or a PDF that you want to open up in Inkscape. Um, if you are just launching Inkscape from the command line, it will launch an actual window with these pages in it. Um, if you continue then to do export fun functionality, it'll use the pages that you've selected as the basis from which all of the rest of the com command line options will operate. Uh, but, as an aside, since I was developing the parsing functionality that allows you to basically specify pages by page number, comma, page number, comma, or page number, dash, page num number, um, I decided that uh, since I already had that parsing functionality, I would put that into the graphic user interface as well, specifically into the PDF Im importer. So if you open up the PDF importer, um, you will find that instead of being able to select just one page, you can now select a range of paid pages. Um, this should allow you to, you know, open up a 200 page PDF, but only select three of the paid pages, uh, greatly improving the, you know, ability of you to open up very large documents. Uh, can be done by specifying the dash dash export page option. It has the same format as the dash dash pages, uh, which is effectively the import side of things. Um, but what, what it will do is it will split out all of the pages uh, into their own files, right? It, it, does that make sense? So like the import uh, functionality just selects which of the pages will be available in the document and the export functionality will actually split those documents uh, into their own file names. Uh, this should allow you to, for example, have a uh, an SVG with let's say a hundred different sprites uh, and then you can just specify, you know, export all of these pages or these specific sprites into their own PNG files at this deep, deep DPI, for example. Uh, unlike the dash dash pages option, this export pages uh, will have no effect on the graphic user interface. It's purely shell operations. Um, okay, now these are the these are the command line options, but I did actually do some work on uh, some non-page uh, related functionality. Um, sorry, non-command line functionality. It is actually page page related. I was requested to add a feature uh, which is paste on page. The idea is that you can copy an object from one page, and then you can paste it onto a different page, but in the same position that it was on the original page. Uh, so, for example, if you have page decorations that are in a specific location on a page, you can copy those, paste them onto a new page, and you won't have to sort of like mess around trying to place them uh, in the same location. Um, this is actually to cope with the lack of duplicate page and some of the other page fun functionality we want to grow into. Uh, but hopefully this will be useful regardless. Um, a little bit of click cleanup of the, the user interface as well. 
Um, I did actually fix a problem in the export ordering uh, fun functionality. This is where when you do file save or file export, uh, and, and there's a list of formats like SVG, JPEG, PDF, etc. There's an order to that list. And I broke it in a previous update. And so I needed to go back and fix the algorithm that I had put in. But while I was there, I decided, you know what, I'm going to actually improve it. There was a to do in the code that basically said, if you, uh, you know, we, we hard code all of these uh, priorities to say, you know, SVG, Inkscape SVG um, layers, TARS should appear before all of the other items. But these were sort of like just nailed into the code. And they were using IDs that could change at any moment. And in fact, two of them had changed and they were just broken subtly in the back background. So I scrapped all of that, uh, no priorities in the code. This time I added the ability to set the priorities for all uh, input, input, output, and template extensions inside of the INX files themselves. So if you're an extensions or author, you can set the priority of your output or input extension so that you can set where in that list it will appear. Um, this should actually improve our Inkscape's own in internal maintenance as well, because we can actually specify these things uh, as extension or authors ourselves. Um, that's about it for me this week. It's been a bit busy. I think I set myself up a little bit too too much work, but uh, you know, next week I'm going to be polishing some of these things off further uh, and testing. So if you'd like to test uh, the command line tools, please let me know. Um, but let's have a look at some of the other things that have been ha happening in Inkscape, features and fixes that I didn't do. Uh, first of all, Raphael, he's been merging a whole bunch of his work that has been, you know, months going on, but he's managed to complete a lot of it this week. Uh, he's refactored the HS Love color wheel code, lots of cleanup, lots of uh, code re reduction, improving maintenance, great work. Uh, two crash fixes from him, PDF export when mark markers have, have a gradient, and a crash when setting styles to a flowed text. Um, he also did a, a fix for the symbols drag, uh, but I can't remember if I mentioned that in a pre previous video. Um, we have Hepocogni, which is a great username, fixed an issue with the key keyboard shortcuts, and Thomas Klausner cleaned up the, some, some namespaces in, in, in the code. Uh, small contributions, but everything is well, welcome. And Mykov has been uh, working on variable fonts, these are where, where you can change like the boldness of fonts um, without having just one fixed bold. Um, the the screenshots look amazing. I can't wait for that to, to land so I can you know go into that with with you. Um, but that's about it for this week. Thank you all for watching, and um, I will see you all next week.